Welcome to Sigma Solver guys. Before I start the video, I want you guys to smash the like button. This helps the YouTube algorithm and keeps me motivated. And if you are new here, then subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss an update. So without any further ado, let's get started. Today we are going to look at another topic which is mid square method for random number generation. So let's read the question first. Discuss the mid square method for random number generation generate 10 random numbers between 0 to 1 with the seed value of 2135. So first we'll understand what is mid square method. This is one of the earliest methods for generating pseudo random numbers. Right? We have also covered another random number generation technique which is called linear congruential method. I'll put that in the i button here. You can go and check out that as well. So coming back to mid square method, this is one of the earliest methods for generating random numbers or pseudo random numbers. Down the line, this technique laid the foundation for future random number generation techniques as the linear congruential method. One more interesting fact is before we had fancy libraries like random in Python or math.random in JavaScript, which you might have used, early programmers and mathematicians needed a manual way, right? to generate random numbers that looked random and this method which we are going to see today was developed by John von Neumann, one of the founding fathers of computing. So now let's break this down and explore how it works and basically generate a few random numbers using this technique. So first we'll define the process. Mid square method works by taking the seed value and this is typically a number with an even number of digits, right? In our case, it is 4. So remember that the seed value for mid square method is mostly a even number. We'll see why is it so down below. Next, we need to square that number, simple squaring. Third, we need to extract the middle digits of the result, same length as the seed. We'll explain this further with an example. Step 4, using these middle digits as the next seed, right? So the seed which we take in the first instance is something we take by random choice or given in the question. But from the next time, we use the seed which we get as the middle digits of the initial squaring result, right? So the fifth step is normalizing it, dividing by the largest possible value like 999 or 1000 to get a number between 0 and 1, right? It totally depends upon what is the uh, digit count for that one, how many digits we get in the seed and yeah, accordingly. So next is the step by step example to generate 5 random numbers. We are given the seed value of 2135. So I will request you to grab a pen and paper or follow along with your IDE for this tutorial from here. So first the seed value which is 2135. We square that. So once we get this number, now we have to pad it because you see we have like seven digits here, but we need actually eight digits in order to scrape out the middle four, right? Which is which will be absolutely in the center of the uh, new number that we get, right? So we pad it. Then we find the middle four digits, which is five five eight two, which is the middle four digits, right? Then we go to generating the random number. So 5582 5, by 10,000. Why 10,000? Because then we would be getting it between 0 and 1. Right. So we do that. Once we done that, so we have this new random number to us. Now for the next iteration, the seed is 5582 5, from here. Right. Then we square it off again. This time we get 8 digits in total. Right. So we don't need to do any padding. We just take the middle digits, which is 1582. Then we do the random number thing again and we get 0.1582. This is the second random number. The third one is the, again the same procedure. The seed is this one, the squaring, the padding and middle four digits and random number generation, right? And now it's your turn to basically repeat these process and do the rest of the seven. So the steps would be the same first square it extract the middle four digits and then divide by 10,000, right? And you may pause the video here and resume once you're done 
and drop your answers in the comment section below. Now we'll go to the limitations of the mid square method. So the first thing is while this method seems elegant, the mid square method has several limitations to it. So the first limitation here is short cycles. So often you will find the sequence begins to repeat itself after a few iterations, right? So which defeats the purpose of like creating random numbers because then it just gonna repeat itself. The next point is convergence to zero. In some cases, the middle digits become all zeros causing the entire sequence to go flat line up beyond that, right? So that is one another problem. The third limitation is the sensitivity to the seed, right? Some seeds create longer and better sequences while others collapse very often. So that's that. The fourth one would be that this is not suitable for cryptographic or statistical applications because you might be guessing that these numbers are not truly random, right? They are deterministic and now kind of reproducible by knowing this particular process, right? And it's just the seed that is protecting all of them. If the person is now able to like guess the seed and the digits, so then it's obviously going to defeat the purpose. Okay, so the final thoughts for the mid square method would be that modern systems don't use this method for serious applications, right? But this is very fantastic for understanding the basics of deterministic randomness. So let me know how far your sequence went before repeating or converging for the above problem. And if you still have any doubts, then feel free to reach out in the comment section below. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos. Till then, happy solving. Hey there, before you go, I've got some fantastic content lined up for you. Over here, we've got some videos and playlists you might enjoy. But first, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss out on any of our future uploads. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.